Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I am a cardiologist and I have been in practice for more than 30 years at the Texas Medical Center and today we are going to look at the normal cardiovascular changes during pregnancy. So let us begin. During pregnancy, there is an increase in blood volume and cardiac output which can go up up to 50 percent uh, during the course of nine months. The cardiac output depicted here in the black is uh, shown in this uh, chart. As you can see, it begins to rise by about the fifth week of gestation and reaches the peak between 20 and 24 weeks. After that, during the 28th week, there is a slight uh, dip, but after that, the cardiac output continues to rise up to 50 percent all the way up to the time of uh, labor and delivery. The heart rate also goes up, which is depicted here in the bottom curve. It uh, starts during the fifth week of gestation and it gradually rises and towards uh, the end, the heart rate can go up by almost 15 to 20 beats per minute. In the middle, we have the stroke volume, which is represented, which also parallels the cardiac output, but it reaches a peak by 24 weeks, and after that, there is a gradual decline in the stroke volume, and the increase in cardiac output is maintained by an increase in heart rate. Because of the increase in volume, because of the increased cardiac output and because of the reduction in the systemic vascular resistance that is dilatation of the blood vessels, there is a corresponding decrease in the blood pressure to a tune of 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury. Now let us look at some of the symptoms that are experienced by pregnant women and most of these symptoms are just normal findings. They may experience shortness of breath or breathlessness with uh, exertion or sometimes at rest. They can experience weakness. They can also notice some swelling in the lower extremities. It is not, not uncommon for them to feel rapid heartbeat. They can also feel palpitations or some extra beats while they are lying down. Some of the findings that we look for are leg edema, palpable right ventricular pulse because of the increased volume during pregnancy, and there may also be a few crackles at the basis. Functional heart murmurs are fairly common in pregnant women during the second and third trimesters. It is not uncommon to hear an S3 gallop. No, we are not talking about the S3 gallop related to left ventricular failure. Here the S3 gallop is more or less related to the left ventricular rapid filling that we see in patients who are pregnant. I mentioned a little bit about functional murmurs. Let us look a little deeper into these uh, heart murmurs which are fairly common and are a normal finding. Functional systolic murmurs result from increased blood flow across the pulmonic and the aortic valves and it is not uncommon to hear a grade 2 systolic murmur across these valves. Because of the increased venous return from the systemic veins and also from the pulmonic veins, there is an increased diastolic rumble during the ventricular filling in patients during pregnancy. For the same reason, we may also hear a soft S3 gallop which is normal in pregnant women and it does not signify a congestive heart failure that we see in the adult population. However, if we hear diastolic murmurs such as those related to pulmonic regurgitation or aortic regurgitation, they are abnormal. If you hear an S4 gallop, it is also considered to be abnormal and these may be bold questions. Let us look at some echocardiographic changes 
we can expect to see during normal pregnancy. If we do serial echocardiograms, we can see a gradual increase in the right ventricular and the left ventricular dimensions, but the, rare, the left ventricular dimension rarely goes beyond 5.5 centimeters. With the increase in volume coming to the heart, there may be an increase in transvalvular flow velocities reflected in the pulse Doppler of the mitral or the tricuspid valves. We also may see some mild regurgitation across the mitral valve or the tricuspid valve which are normal findings and most of these findings uh, disappear right after the delivery of the baby. Let us talk about what happens in the labor room. I am talking about during labor. Besides the mother screaming and straining, with, e with each uterine contraction, there is an increase in heart rate, there is an increase in blood pressure, there is an increase in cardiac output. Immediately following the delivery of the infant, the venous return increases because there is no longer pressure over the inferior vena cava and also the placental blood will be returning to the main circulation. The cardiac output drops within the first hour after the delivery. The blood loss is normally between 300 to 400 ml with uh, a vaginal delivery and it can be up to 500 to 800 ml with a C-section. The pregnancy related cardiovascular changes return to normal in 4 to 6 weeks. Let us look at some other changes that we can expect uh, uh, in the cardiovascular system and elsewhere. The blood can become hypercoagulable. That means the blood clots easily. The albumin in the blood decreases and this is mainly related to increase in water retention and hemodilution. They also may exhibit insulin resistance. There is an increase in red blood cell mass. We can also see an increase in erythrocyte sedimentation rate. The renal blood flow increases by almost 30 percent during uh, pregnancy. There may be increased hepatic clearance of medication. Let us look at some of the hemodynamic changes in the immediate postpartum period. As soon as the baby is delivered, as I said, there is an increase in venous return from the lower extremities because there is no longer the compression of the inferior vena cava by the pregnant uterus. There is also a shifting of the blood from the placental circulation into the systemic circulation. This increase in effective blood volume increases the left ventricular filling pressure, stroke volume and cardiac output. So initially the cardiac output goes up, but the body very quickly adapts. As a result, the heart rate and cardiac output return to normal within a couple of hours after the infant is delivered. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief overview of normal cardiovascular hemodynamic changes during pregnancy and during the next presentation, we are going to focus on postpartum cardiomyopathy. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. And thank you for watching and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you again.